Before the time of GPS and smartphones, it was difficult for sailors to know their precise location at sea. Finding latitude was fairly easy. All they needed to do was find the angle between the horizon and the midday sun, or Polaris if done during the night. Finding longitude was tricky. Imagine the Earth as an orange, split into 24 segments. And each segment is 15 degrees apart and has a time difference of one hour. If a sailor knew what the time difference was between their current location and a given position, then they could calculate their longitude. The problem was that there were no clocks accurate enough to keep time on long journeys. Getting lost at sea wasn't just annoying, it was a matter of life and death. By the 1600s, Britain and other European nations depended on the sea to trade and keep in contact with faraway lands. To save lives and money, sailors needed an easy way to calculate their longitude while at sea. King Charles II didn't want Britain to be left behind and in 1675 was convinced by some of the most influential people at the time to build a national observatory to investigate if finding longitude using the moon and the stars would work. John Flamsteed knew that an accurate map of the stars was needed and so he was hired as the first astronomer royal. The site of the old Greenwich Castle was the ideal location for the new observatory. Over the next 40 years, John Flamsteed made thousands of observations, but his book was too technical for sailors. It wasn't until 1767 that the observatory began to produce an annual book called the Nautical Almanac that helped sailors calculate their longitude more easily. By the 1800s, sailors were also using accurate sea clocks, known as chronometers, to work out their longitude. From 1833, they began to use the daily 1pm drop of the observatory's time ball to check their chronometers. From 1852, the observatory sent time signals around the country via telegraph wires, as Greenwich Mean Time became useful to more people. Greenwich became an important place for time and longitude, both in the UK and abroad. In 1884, a group of specialists decided that the meridian line, defined by the main telescope at Greenwich, should be the prime meridian of the world. Measuring time by the stars was just one job for the astronomers here. Others were busy taking daily photographs of the sun, monitoring the weather, measuring the Earth's magnetic field, observing double stars, and mapping the sky using photography. What a hectic place. This came to an end in the 1940s as the observatory relocated to a less polluted site at Hurstmonceau in Sussex, then to Cambridge in 1990, and finally to the Canary Islands, whose clear skies were much preferred by the astronomers. The historic observatory at Greenwich is now a museum where we focus on sharing our history and making astronomy fun for everyone.